how to master protein for lean muscle. What is the optimal intake? What kinds of protein are best? What are the benefits? And more. In this episode, you guys are going to learn why protein is so important to your overall body composition and your health. You're going to learn how much you should eat in order to achieve your goals and what the best sources are to both lose fat, build muscle, and achieve optimal health. Before we dive in, if you're listening on the Apple Podcast app or on Spotify, make sure you hit the follow button so you don't miss any future episodes. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button below. super excited to talk all about protein. If you guys have been following the podcast and me on social media for any bit of time, you know how I talk about the importance of protein. And if you follow other people who are into the nutrition space, a lot of people are talking about the importance of protein. And I really want to just break it down for you guys. I want to break it, break down why protein is super important. So you have the knowledge. I want to provide you with the knowledge of the quantity of protein that you should be having, how much per day, how much per meal, how much if you're looking to add muscle, how much if you're looking to cut fat. And then I want to provide you with the highest quality protein sources. I want to talk about animal protein versus plant protein. I want to talk about the bioavailability of protein. I want to talk about the ones that are maybe high in fat, ones that are low in fat, and ones that are going to be best for you. So let's go ahead and dive into it. The first thing I want to do is educate you. I want to talk about why protein is super important. Some of the biggest benefits of protein, of course, is to build muscle. Build, building muscle is not just important for looking the way you want to look, but it's important for performing the way you want to perform. And it's really important for metabolic health as well, because muscles are a glucose sponge and they help to blood regulate your blood sugar, which is important for your long-term health. It's also important for your cardiovascular health. And so protein is super important for muscle and muscle is super important for those regions. Protein is also really important for satiation, for making sure we feel full enough, and that will prevent us from overeating. That will also help to prevent kind of cravings. It's also really important for bone health. Protein is also the macronutrient, the macronutrients being your carbs, your fats, and your proteins. Protein of those three has the highest thermic effect of food. Thermic effect of food is essentially the amount of calories that your body burns when digesting, absorbing, and assimilating the nutrients that you're putting inside of your body. So basically, for every 100 calories of protein that you eat, you really only net out about 80 to 90 of those calories because anywhere from maybe 10 to 20 of those calories are burned simply by digesting the protein itself. And thermic effective food isn't necessarily a huge part of your total daily energy expenditure, but every little bit can add up when it comes to your body fat percentage loss goals and your weight loss goals. And then one of the other benefits of protein is it doesn't easily get stored as body fat. When it comes to being, when it comes to overeating, carbs and fats are much more easily stored as body fat than protein is. I'm not going to get into the science, both because I'm not the science nerd that can very easily and simply explain it to you, like there are other people out there, but just know that the science is that the carbs and fats are more easily stored as body fat than protein is. So those are some of the whys behind protein, why it's so critical with regards to your health, your metabolic health, your cardiovascular health, uh, and everything like that. Next, I want to dive into quantity. How much protein should you actually be eating? But make sure you don't stop listening after quantity because quality is super important as well. So quantity, my recommendation to basically everybody, no matter what your goals are, body composition or health goals, is anywhere from 0.7 to one gram of protein per day per pound of your ideal body weight. Now, that means that if I'm 150 pounds and I want to stay 150 pounds, then I would consume anywhere from 105 to 150 grams of protein per day. Now, if I was a hundred, if I was 220 pounds and I wanted to get down to 200 pounds, then I, 200 pounds was my ideal body weight. That means I would consume anywhere from 140 to 200 grams of protein per day. So that is the per day recommendation that almost anybody who I look up to with regards to nutrition, anybody that I look up to with regards to the science of nutrition and muscle and body fat will recommend when it comes to your protein consumption. If you're overweight, you definitely need to ensure that you're choosing your ideal body weight. 
when it comes to your protein consumption, right? Because let's say you're 250 pounds and you want to get down to 200 pounds, then you don't want to eat one gram per pound of current body weight because 250 grams of protein is a lot of protein that's really hard to get in. And if you're looking to lose weight, then eating that much protein might prevent you from being in a calorie deficit. So if you're looking to lose weight, you want to make sure that you're using that 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of ideal body weight. So make sure you keep that in mind. Another thing is if you're looking to bulk up, meaning if you're looking to add muscle to your body frame, then yes, protein is super important. But one of the things that's actually counterintuitive is you want to make sure you're not overeating on protein. If you're looking to bulk up, that doesn't necessarily mean that you go for the one gram per pound of body weight. I would still just fall somewhere within that range because, because protein is so filling. If you try to eat so much protein, that can prevent you from actually eating enough in order to actually gain weight and gain muscle. And so it's almost counterintuitive. If you're, if you're looking to bulk, make sure you're still in that 0.7 to one gram per pound of ideal body weight range but you want to make sure that you're not overdoing it to where it's preventing you from eating other foods that will help you gain weight. Essentially, you want to be making sure that you're eating enough carbs and enough healthy fats in order to actually put on the body, uh, the body weight and the, the muscle that you want to put on. And then vice versa, if you're looking to cut, meaning you're looking to lose body fat, you're looking to lose weight, maybe you do go on the higher end of that 0.7 to 1 gram because you can leverage protein even more for the satiation benefits, for the filling benefits, so you're not crazy hungry when you're in a calorie deficit. And you can also leverage the benefits of the thermic effect of food. Again, how you're netting less calories when you consume protein compared to the other macronutrients. So the last thing I want to talk about with regards to quantity is when it comes to that 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of ideal body weight per day, for most of you guys, that's going to come down to eating 20 to 50 grams of protein per meal for three meals a day. And if you're struggling to hit your quantities with your protein goals, then you can add in a protein shake for 20 to 40 grams of protein for that protein shake. That's often what I do with people. With people who are, I'm coaching are looking to lose weight or lose body fat, then I tell them three meals a day to get in, let's say, let's say their goal is to eat 130 grams of protein a day. Let's say the goal is 130 grams of protein per day and they want to space that out. Then I would say, let's get 35 grams of protein and three meals, getting you to 105 grams of protein across those three meals. And then let's add in a protein shake to give you 25 grams of protein. But like with the protein shake, let's just stick with the protein shake. Don't make it a full meal. Let's just make it a shake to get to that protein number rather than having excessive unneeded calories. So I would recommend for a lot of people, especially if you're looking to lose body fat is let's split up your protein goals within the three meals and a maybe post-workout protein shake in order to get there. And then another way that you can, get, if you're struggling to hit those protein quantities as high, is have high protein snacks as you're going throughout your day. Things like beef jerky, things potentially like uh, hard-boiled eggs, like cottage cheese, like Greek yogurt, things like that. And then if you're looking to add on muscle, then maybe just add a fourth meal in general, in order to hit your protein goals. So if you're looking to add muscle, adding a fourth meal onto your three would be really beneficial. So again, I know I'm kind of going through things relatively quickly here and, and maybe it's a lot to take in, but feel free to pause, rewind, take notes as you'd like to, but I just want to provide as much value for you guys and actionable advice for you to be able to achieve your goals because that's what I'm all about, right? I want you guys to achieve your goals. I want you to look better. I want you to feel better. I want you to perform better and be that much more confident in your body. Before we get into the quality of protein, which is super important, you guys need to make sure that you take part in the one-week free free trial of the 10-week transformation if you have not yet already. You can go to nickcarrier.com slash free trial to get workouts, to get recipes, and to get goal-setting advice and habit-forming advice that I teach to my 10-week transformation clients. You can go to nickcarrier.com slash free trial and get access to all of that starting today. Let's finish with the quality of protein and why that is super important. The first thing to note is that when it comes to quality, quality is important, but when it comes to optimizing for maintaining and building muscle, total protein intake is most important. Then 
you want high quality protein and animal protein sources are more bioavailable, which means your body can use them, use the amino acids more easily in animal protein than they can in plant protein, mainly because plant protein is, is also wrapped up in fiber and those are harder to access. So they're more bioavailable, they're more, more micronutrient rich, and they usually have more leucine in it as well. And leucine is the branch chain amino acid that is primarily responsible for muscle growth. And so those are really the top reasons why animal protein sources are superior when it comes to muscle compared to plant protein sources. The last reason why I would say they're superior is because they're easier to hit your protein goals without eating excessive amounts of calories. And I'll dive into that a little bit when I get into the plant protein sources. But here's a, like a quick list of eight of my favorite animal protein sources, if you want to jot these down. Organic chicken breasts, ground turkey, grass-fed beef, Wild caught fish. I personally like wild caught salmon and wild caught cod. Pasture raised eggs, egg whites, and then Greek yogurt and cottage cheese. These eight options are things that I eat on a weekly basis. I probably eat every single one of these, if not seven out of eight of these on a weekly basis to help me hit my personal protein goals in order to optimize my lean muscle and the health of my lean muscle. When it comes to plant protein sources, I'm going to list off a few here as well. You can think of grains, you can think of your lentils, your quinoa, your rice, your farro. Then beans, black beans are probably my favorite type of bean. Then you can have edamame or other soy products and then things like nuts and seeds. Now, with all of those plant protein sources, the thing about them is if you are looking to get to that one gram per pound of ideal body weight simply through these plant protein sources, you're gonna overeat on calories because they're just not as protein dense as animal protein sources are. So the protein to calorie ratio is a little bit lower than they are in a lot of the animal protein sources. So again, that doesn't that doesn't make them bad at all. I eat all of those plant protein sources very regularly. It just means that I'm not, when I'm looking to hit my protein goals and I'm planning out my meals to hit my protein goals, I'm not planning them around those things. Those things are just maybe a little bit of extra fuel to the fire with regards to the animal protein sources. So that was a lot today. Protein, baby. Hit those protein goals. Every single one of you guys out there, like it, it honestly does not really matter what your health and fitness goals are. Protein is super important. And when it comes to nutrition, basically there's never a one size fits all. But what I, what I would say would work and is important to hit for 90 plus percent of us is these protein goals. But it's important that it's high quality. It's important that you're not just eating fatty bacon for every single meal. Is bacon necessarily bad for you? No, the poison is in the dosage for a lot of these types of things. Like, am I gonna be eating a fatty cuts of steak every single day? No, probably not. Is it best for your heart health? No, probably not. Some people are doing that and not seeing huge, ram huge negative ramifications with regards to their heart health and cholesterol levels, but who knows? I would say the safest thing is to vary up your protein sources, keep variety in your diet with these animal protein sources and these plant protein sources. But again, if I had to go through them really quickly again, the why is around muscle health and the fact that it's filling enough. You have healthy muscle and you're not overeating on calories. The quantity, 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of your ideal body weight. Think about spacing it out 20 to 50 grams of protein, three meals a day, and potentially adding a protein shake in there. And quality, think about building your meals around a high quality animal protein source and then using the plant protein sources as extra ways to get that number elevated to your goal range. I hope this was enjoyable today. I hope you feel like you learned a lot. You know, it might not have been the most fun episode, but I hope it was a really educational episode and you feel more motivated and more equipped and more empowered to how to hit your protein goals on a daily basis. Make sure you share this episode with a friend or family member. If you're in the 10 week transformation and you know that maybe your accountability buddy or somebody else in the group is struggling to hit their protein goals, make sure you share them this episode so they don't miss out on it. And make sure again that you take part in the Nick Carrier and the one week free trial by going to nickcarrier.com slash free trial. I'll give you a bunch of recipes that will allow you to hit these 20 to 50 grams of protein 
per meal targets so that you can hit your overall daily protein goal. I hope today helps you get closer to your health and fitness goals. And ultimately, I hope it gets you closer and closer to your best you.